Hello? Welcome to our channel, focusing on stock investing and finding the diamond in the rough. Today we are going to share our evaluation on the US stock market and what our thoughts moving forward. Without further ado, let's dive right in. First let's take a look at the S&P valuation measures provided by JP Morgan in December last year. We can see that all these measures, including forward PE, Schiller's PE ratio, price to book value, and price to cash flow value are currently sitting way above the last 25 year average. Without a doubt, all these measures are pointing to the direction, telling us that we might be in a bubble. But does this mean the bubble is going to burst? The simple answer is yes, the bubble will burst. We have absolutely no doubt about it. The bubble will burst eventually at a time, in due course. But the real question is, is the bubble going to burst now, this year we meant? That is the question we need to answer. Maybe you can imagine, you are holding a balloon that has been inflating with air to an extent that is large enough for a balloon pop. We will never know when that will pop, but we will all be alert and afraid that at some point in time, it is going to pop and get us hurt. The escalating tension while holding the balloon, I am sure we all share some kind of experience doing such that. But keep this in mind, there is always a possibility to reverse the action by slowly and gradually releasing the air back to its original shape. Will this happen to the economic bubble we all hearing in the market and the news? We do not know, we never do, but we do know is to monitor the economic data to take a glimpse. We need to know if the fundamentals of an asset can reasonably justify its price, its intrinsic value. Quantitative easing in March 2020 has supported the economy and pushed many asset prices to the historical high. Like Ray Dalio, the founder of Bridgewater, said cash is trash. Investors were rushing in risky assets trying to keep their asset values, at least trying to outpace its deprecating value. Following the regression JP Morgan has done on forward PE and subsequent one-year and five-year returns. On the left chart, we can see that, in one-year returns on S&P 500, the dots are scatter across the chart. The dots are not lining up on the regression line, indicating the results are less convincing, with only a 3% R squared. But, when we put our focus on the right chart, five-year annualized returns on S&P, the dots are obviously more tightened on the regression line, providing a 39% R squared, a much higher rate of future returns can be explained by current forward PE ratio. By the end of December, the forward PE was 21.2. The big red diamond on the chart clearly tells us that we can only expect a close to 0% annualized return in the next five years. This shows us that the stock market is more likely to go sideways and difficult to produce at least 8% to 9% annualized return on the historical basis. So, why is this the case? S&P 500 is dominated and weighted heavily by the top 10 stocks, contributing about 31% of the market capitalization of the S&P. What are the top 10 stocks? I am sure those who have been investing in the US stock market will know the answers. Those are Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Tesla, Google, Facebook, Berkshire, and JP Morgan. Investors rushed into these stocks in order to not be outperformed by the index. But, the index dominated by these stocks do not fairly reflect the broader market. We have got a very narrow leadership and more companies are making new lows than there is making new highs. The breadth within the market is extremely weak. With what we said earlier, the S&P 500 is expected to generate close to 0% annualized return. It is because the large cap, blue chip stocks price has already priced in their future growth rate in the current share price. That is exactly why we saw Facebook, or shall we call it Meta, plummeted 26% after reporting their earnings. They forecasted a weaker than expected revenue growth in the next quarter, and the stock price reacted instantly. Zooming out, to look at the top 10 stocks, their current P-E ratio is 33.2, 68% higher than the average value. However, when looking at the remaining stocks, the current ratio is 19.7, with only 26% higher than the average value. It is rather understandable why investors are paying a premium to the top 10 stocks. It is because they have a dominating position in the market, with some of the companies, can easily raise their price and transfer the cost back to the customers. This is relatively difficult for the mid and small cap stocks with a business model that still needs to be proven. 
We are tough to imagine that one day we will be stopped using Microsoft Office at work, searching without using Google, and buying an electric car without first considering Tesla. We think that these top 10 stocks have the capability to stay in the game, and this is also why we think that the market is more likely to go sideways than having a crash this year. Raising interest rates should not bring too much of a problem to these top companies. And these stocks can perform as a stabilizer to stabilize the market. In the near term, I am referring to the next 5 to 10 years, there is a potential concern that might cause these large cap stocks to decline in its share percentage of the indexes and its intrinsic value. But right now, we do not see this kind of concern. If there are some hints we notice, we will need to be aware of the impact. If you are interested, leave a comment below, and we can make a video talking just about this. Now, after talking all these points, can we find any value plays in the market? Yes, there are always some good companies that need our research and time to dig deeper to find the diamond in the rough. With the line chart drawn by Yardini Research, we notice that the large caps, as in line with what we discussed earlier, are sitting at the relatively high valuation, with a forward PE of 19.7. This high number of forward PE can only be seen back in 2000, at the time of dot-com bubble. Does this mean we are entering the market crash? The answer is no, at least not at this moment in time. Let us explain. This high forward PE ratio can go down significantly when the large caps continue to deliver the high earning growth rate, as before. But, this also signifies their stock price cannot move up any further due to the fact that earnings are constant and price action moves from time to time. When earnings numbers do not change and stock prices move higher, this will lead to this forward PE number goes up. This reverberates with our idea, suggesting the market is likely to go sideways. So, what now? Let's look at the mid-cap and small-cap valuations. We can see that mid-cap is sitting at a relatively reasonable price, at least it seems to us that they are sitting on the average range of the past 20 years. While the small-cap stocks are obviously trading below their average range. Only the correction in 2011 and 2018, as well as the financial crisis in 2008, could see this kind of low forward PE ratio. This helps us to establish the thesis by putting our best effort in finding the diamond in the small caps. Also, the 20-year annualized returns by asset class here gives us more confidence in finding this diamond in the small caps. The annualized return for small caps in the past 20 years is 8.7%, compared with only 7.5% in the S&P 500, 3.7% for home buyers, and 2.9% for average investors. Of course, no one else wants to be an average investor here. And our research has helped us all to save some of the dirty work, shedding lights in our direction moving forward. Speaking of the mid and small caps, we can find that the stock price of some big names has plummeted significantly from all-time highs. For example, Teladoc and Zoom have plummeted close to 80%. Beyond Meat dropped more than 70% from $221 in January 2021 to only $53 in January 2022. Lemonade, the online insurance company with a revolutionary business model, also dropped more than 70% from all-time highs. Some other big names you must be very familiar with also dropped significantly, such as Zillow. Even though these stocks have plummeted significantly, we do not think that all these stocks are worth buying right now. Given the Fed will be raising interest rate, most likely announcing in March, we will need to be very carefully in understanding the company's fundamentals, picking out the stones, and learning their business. Like we said in the very beginning, finding diamonds in the rough. You shouldn't expect that diamond just shows up itself. More serious work needs to be done for us. Here, we are going to wrap up our video. We have looked into the S&P valuation measures, break down the future annualized return with current forward PE, showing that the large caps have dominated the index, and mid to small cap stocks are relatively worth our time to dig deeper to find that diamond. In the end, thank you for watching. If you find this video useful, press the like and subscribe button, hit the notification bell. Only in this way, we will be able to deliver our most updated video to you instantly. Leave your comments below if you have any thoughts about our work.
If there are stocks that you would want us to look into, share it in the comment section. We could take one to two stocks for analysis in the upcoming videos. Investing is for everyone. I will see you in the next video.